hug everyone. Say hi. Okay. Hi. We were just hi. drafting. Are you going to send us the clip so we can put it in our Yeah, you better. <laughs> yes, I will send the clip. Okay, because I was like, read this. I don't want to. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner, and welcome or welcome back to my channel, and welcome to one of the secret vlog projects of 2023. I am so excited about this one, as you may or may not have been able to tell in the first tiny little clip. Izzy from Happy From Now, May from This Past Romance, and Brie from In Love and Words, and I have been up to some little secret plotting and planning, and now is the time to share it with you. In 2022, I was listening to the Fate of Mates podcast, and they had an episode where they recommended romance books to Ted Lasso characters and as a group we were all talking about it because we all really enjoy Ted Lasso and we decided that we were going to have a vlog collaboration series together where we would read the recommended books from that podcast that celebrated Ted Lasso characters and that's what this video is. Quickly just jump on and actually show you the books that were all that came out of the Faded Mates episode. So this is on the Faded Mates website so you can actually go in and listen to um, the episode, but they had suggested books for Ted, for Beard, um, for Nate, although Nate was not one of our draft picks in this round, and if you've seen the show you might realise why. Uh, books for Keely, books for Jamie, books for Sam and Higgins, books for the Diamond Dogs and Isaac, Colin, Dr Sharon, Trent Krim, Roy had quite a few in here. Uh, books for Rebecca. May coordinated this entire thing. She put the whole thing together. She organized a draft pick for all of the books and it was the most fun that we had. We didn't actually record the choosing of the draft because I think we spent about two hours laughing at each other and just having a grand old time but it was so fun and I take my hat off to her because she sorted it all out because we had to go through there are a whole stack of books that we'd all read individually so we had to make sure that we had said which ones we had read before and then we went through the list and we had to pick all of our books. I ended up with 10 books from my draft I'm going to go through what I have picked and then we're going to jump into the vlog clips. This has been filmed over a significant period of time over a couple of months so expect some changes in appearance potentially in energy levels because I did start reading in January but more than likely this is coming out sometime around March April but yes I'm really really excited to share it with you. So my first draft pick was one of the recommendations for Ted and that was The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. My next pick was Puck Me Secretly by Odette Stone. This was a recommendation for Beard. I had two books for Roy. So the first one was Playing It Cool by Amy Andrews and also Naked in Death by J.D. Robb. This one I'm very excited to get to at some point because I've never read J.D. Robb or Nora Roberts and I have both of them on this list. The next pick was for Rebecca and that was Visions in White by Nora Roberts. I had two Keely picks. The first one is The Ladies Champion by Marie Lipscomb and then also Lead by Kylie Scott. For Higgins I have Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins. I'm really excited. I haven't read Beverly Jenkins in ages. My pick for Jamie was Stripped by Zoe Castile and then I had a prompt for Isaac and that was Polaris Rising by Jessie Mihalik. So I'm really excited to dive into these books and to read them over the next couple of months and then and share my thoughts with you throughout the vlog. So I hope that you enjoy watching. I will leave everyone else's videos linked down below so that you can check them out as well. And we hope that you enjoy this Ted Lasso inspired vlog series because we are all very, very excited about it. It is time to read the first book for this vlog. I have gone with one of the books from the recommendations for Roy Kent, Playing It Cool. I've heard this one mentioned a few times, so I am very eager to see what it's like. It is a sports romance. This time we are playing rugby, which is not the football of choice for Melbournians because this is set in Sydney. But yeah, I have heard that this is pretty insta-lusty, sort of more focused on the steam than the depth of the relationship. But you know what? It's fine with me. So I finished playing it cool and I had to go back and listen to the Faded Mates episode because I'd forgotten what they said about the book. And it was interesting because one of the things that I was thinking about while I was reading it, and I don't know whether this is because I've listened to the episode ages ago and it just sunk into my brain, or if it was just something that I was thinking about and happened to match up with what they'd said. Who knows at this point? The reason that they recommended this book specifically was because Roy doesn't like other people putting others down. And at the very start of this book, Harper's stepbrother is very insulting towards her, towards her body in front of Dex and the rest of the team because she's a curvy woman 
and she is not ashamed of her body but he is. He's in media and he's just embarrassed by her and Dex can't stand it. He is just like no this is not happening and he asks her out on a date. What I will say about this book one I, I agree I think that it's a good fit for Roy not just because the hero stands up for people but also because for the first part of the book Dex is actually relatively good at communicating what he's thinking and why he likes Harper. Second half of the book not so much because he gets all up in his head and has some things he needs to sort through which was a little bit frustrating but you know there we go. It's a fairly straightforward book from you know moving from a to B. They start out attempting to fake date and then quickly move to friends with benefits very very quickly but Dex doesn't particularly want a relationship at this point in time and you know when he starts having feelings it takes him a while to sort out what he wants. The writing is fairly straightforward and to the point it moves fairly quickly. It's not one of those books that's building up anticipation and building up heaps of depth but it was entertaining and I liked Harper. I like that she is just very confident with herself. She's an artist and she doesn't accept Dex when he can't accept himself and what and the situation and I deeply appreciated that. So I will check in when I get to the next book. Hi everyone it's been a while since I read a book for this vlog so I am going to pick up The X-Hex by Erin Sterling which was one of the recommendations for Ted and I'm very excited to get to this. It is one of the physical books so I'm also reading it for my read what you own challenge so I'm knocking off a few things as we go. Tonight's dinner salad can only be described as this is what I had in my fridge so I threw it all together into a bowl. But it's some lettuce, tomato, cucumber, chorizo, halloumi and an egg. So I just finished The X-Hex and I really loved this book. This is so much fun and a really easy read actually. Just very easy to sort of sink into and enjoy. Sorry my hair is still trying. So it is the story of Vivian who at the very start of the book curses her ex-boyfriend because she thinks it's a joke. Like she's a witch but she but the curse itself is a bit of a joke and you know she's upset about breaking up with him and doesn't think anything of it. And then we flash forward nine years later and Reese has to come back to the town. His family is from Wales and he's coming back to the US because it is the anniversary of the town where Vivian lives in and he has to renew the ley lines there because it's something that his family does. And as he gets to town things start to go crazy bananas and the magic just goes haywire because he's been cursed and it infects the rest of the town. And so Reese and Vivian have to work together to try and sort out this curse and along the way they find out some things about Reese's family and about Vivian's family and it was just great and I think the reason that this was I can't remember the reason why this was selected from the podcast but I would have to say it probably has to do with the fact that Reese makes a joke of everything a bit like Ted does in that he tries to see the lighter side of things and occasionally has to take things seriously and that's what Reese had to do in this book. I really enjoyed it. Hi everyone so it is the 6th of February and I am about to start the next book for this Ted Lasso readathon or read along. This is The Ladies Champion by Marie Lipscomb which was one of my draft picks for Keeley. So this is a historical romance. It is about a warrior I think him and his companions are killed and he's accompanied by a barmaid who happens to be the lady of the town where his friends were injured or killed I don't know. Clearly I paid a lot of attention while I was reading this blurb. He doesn't think very highly of the lady of the town but he doesn't realize that the barmaid is the lady and yeah we're gonna read it and see what it's like. Okay so I finished The Ladies Champion I have to correct some of my misconceptions. So the Lady of Blackmere is very I think socially awkward anyway she has basically been too kind-hearted and doesn't want to pa raise taxes for her people so basically her town has no money and she has begged for years for the champions to come and perform a tourney in town and so on the night that they do that she trades places with a female bartender and she goes to meet them and as that's happening her town is attacked by bandits. Now previously she has sent all of her guards out to try and stop the bandits before they get to town but obviously all of that has gone awry. She ends up on the run with Brandon the bear as well as two other surviving members of the champions and she doesn't tell them yet that she's Lady Blackmere and so you know that's a source of conflict at a point and then 
after all of that, she strikes up a relationship with Brandon and then they have to try and retake Black Mirror from the bandits. And that's the story. It was fine. I mean, it's a historical romance, so it was just fine. And I think the thing with this one, like they're just so unfailingly polite to one another. And while I don't necessarily want my main characters to be hurling insults at one another, they're just so polite. <laughs> and it's like, come on, let's let's get this thing moving. So it was fine. And I can see why it was recommended for Keely. It's very romantic in that sense, because Brandon is a plus size hero. He is an absolute sweetheart. He is just enamored with Nat. And even when he finds out who she is and that she's been lying, he is able to see why she would have done that and forgives her very quickly. Anyway, I will update you guys when I read the next book for this reading vlog. It has been a crazy, crazy week. It is the 10th of Feb and um, yeah, I've been meaning to film reading another book for this vlog, but yeah, I couldn't do it this week. I had to wait until I was mentally and emotionally okay to be able to do it. Uh, just because no one needs to see me being a mess in these vlogs, to be honest. But I am going to pick up another book for my Ted Lasso read along, and that is Naked in Death by JD Robb. I'm really, really excited to read this. I've never read JD Robb or Nora Roberts, and this is going to be my first one. Now, this was a book pick for Roy, and this is my second pick for Roy. So excited about this one. And yeah, I know this is the start of a really long running series, which Let's be real, I should not be starting any new series at any point, but I'm going to read it and then I'll check in with you guys. I finished Naked in Death and this is a really interesting book. I, I liked it in terms of the fact that it's kind of a police procedural romantic suspense type book. I had no idea that it was set in the future and therefore it has this kind of sci-fi element, which has some very bizarre elements and the technology is futuristic, but also feels dated because I think this was written in the 90s? 95. So it is dated in that sense and there are some questionable consent moments in here between the couple. So you have Eve who is a police detective and she is investigating the death of a sex worker and in the future prostitution is legalized and the woman who is killed quite brutally and it's very descriptive so be warned about that. She is the granddaughter of a US senator and so Obviously they're trying to keep everything very low profile because of the sensitive nature of it. And then another sex worker ends up murdered in a similar way. And it's Eve working through this and in doing so her path crosses with a billionaire named Rourke who has clearly more money than God. And their relationship is interesting because he is very determined to, I suppose, how's the best way to describe it? He's very controlling, but so is Eve. And Eve has quite a tragic backstory. So content warnings for essay of a child, also physical abuse, all of that sort of stuff, as well as, you know, the violent murder and rape of sex workers in the book. A lot of the terms used to talk about the sex workers could also be triggering for people. So be aware of that going into it. But as a concept, the book is very intriguing. And even Rourke's relationship is very interesting. I feel like in the second part of the book, Rourke lost some of the super controlling parts of himself as he sort of begins to realize a little bit about what Eve has been through. So like that part I appreciated. Like if you like a, a really dominant contemporary alpha male billionaire in a story, then you're probably not going to take too many issues with it because it tends to be quite typical in, in that vein. But yeah, I think I have kind of mixed feelings because the concept of the world, this futuristic earth has some very interesting things going on, some very interesting things around gun laws, despite the fact that there is gun violence in here, gun law, guns have been outlawed. Yeah, like it's, it's a very interesting read. So I would be interested in reading, in continuing the series. I want to see if the same trend it, that happened in this book continues. And obviously I think it might for the first couple for the thing, just given the time period that it was written in. But yeah, it's interesting. I kind of don't know how I feel about parts of it because some parts of it I loved and other parts I'm like, ooh, yeah, would not fly now. But like I can contextualize the book for the time it was written, but you know, does that now excuse things? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I read it because I've always wanted to try it. 
It is the 18th of February. I have been out this morning at a book signing event and while I was catching the train into the city and back out again, I started Puck Me Secretly by Odette, by Odette Stone. And this was the book pick for Beard. And I don't actually know how far I'm into it because I started reading on my phone and now I am trying to switch to my Kindle because I want to read it on my Kindle. Let's see if it's picked up how far in I am. Anyway, it is the story of Rory who is going home to Vancouver because her dad wants her to come and basically be his protege and intern for a year. While she's flying and she's terrified of flying, the, there's a plane crash and the guy that she's sitting next to is this big guy who just talks her through it, is really calm, and his name is Max. And he gets her out of the plane and they end up having one night together in their hotel room and then he just, he's gone by the next morning. And when Rory goes to work for the first day, her dad is the GM for the Vancouver Wolves hockey team. So they're an NHL team and her dad wants her to basically shadow him as his protege for the year. And there's a lot of jokes in here around nepotism and there's definitely some stuff going on related to that. And of course, she figures out very quickly that Max is a hockey player who has just been traded to the Vancouver Wolves after he was basically kicked out of his previous team because he started a fight with a teammate, but no one knows why. So apparently I'm 45% of the way through. I am enjoying it. It's it's a single POV and I would have liked Max's point of view, but I, I kind of get why we only get Rory's perspective. I don't like her father. He is throwing her into situations and not backing her up, despite the fact that he's saying, no, I want you to be in charge and, and whatnot. But whenever the person in charge of media relations who seems to have it out for Rory suggests something, he just goes with what she says, despite Rory putting her foot down and saying, well, no, Max isn't going to be making media appearances or things like that. Like, I, I can't get a read on what it is that he's trying to do, ex except for the fact that I don't really like what he's doing. And there's also these little snippets of someone who is basically harassing Rory on social media saying that she's sleeping around with the players that she's worthless at her job and the only reason she's got the job is because her dad's there and like she knows that she's only got the position because her dad's the GM and she doesn't want it like she is planning on being there for a year and then leaving like she has no intention of staying and she is mortified when he puts her up in a big shiny office next to his and, and all of that she doesn't want it but she's kind of backed into a corner and so she tries to do the best job that she can and, and I can appreciate that with her as a character but everyone else is being an asshole <laughs> so it's interesting but Max is definitely a very protective kind of hero so far so I'm curious to see where this goes I am so conflicted on this book I don't even know where to start with it because the first half of the book and the second half of the book are completely different books and I really liked the first half aside from the nagging feeling that something was going to happen that was just going to set me off and we'll get to that in a minute. Like there was humour and there was banter and it was lighthearted and then suddenly we shift and the second half of the book, like I don't mind going drama-ish in the second half of the book and I've read plenty of books that do that and do it really effectively but this one I don't know what was going on. I'm going to put spoilers down here because I have to talk about it but before I do that, Harry Potter references. I don't even know. <laughs> Why? Can we just stop? Stop with the Harry Potter references. Okay, so the reason that this whole thing flips around is that there, and this is a content slash trigger warning, is it deals with sexual assault. And here is where we're going to go into spoilers. So there are three mentions of sexual assault that has taken place historically in this book. None of them were handled with any kind of finesse. They're just like, oh yes, this happened and now we're doing this. Why? Coupled with one of those is a sexual, sexual assault that resulted in a pregnancy. And there's some weird comments made around the pregnancy that sound very vaguely pro-life. So like, it's, it's not explicitly that, but it feels like that. Why? Why? Okay, I'm gonna take spoilers off here. This may or may not be a spoiler, I don't know, but anyway, I'm gonna say it. All of the villains in here are very dramatic and over the top. And we know straight away, we know from the very first time that we meet these characters that they're the villains of the story. And of course, when the villain gets their comeuppance, it's totally unrealistic and I, I don't know. There's some stuff in here with women basically going at each other and I, I don't like that. And the other thing that really bothered me in this, now it's a romance, so yes, the side characters are generally, li like it's, are limited. 
unless you know the friendship group is really integral to the relationship. This is a book about a hockey player. I don't think we learn a single other name of the hockey players from the Vancouver Wolves in this book. Now this is a series and so to my mind each book would be about a different player on the team. I don't know, I couldn't tell you who else is on this team so why would I want to pick up another book in the series? Like I have no connection to them. Well you don't have to make it all about the side characters like some authors like doing that and some don't but like, if you're going to have a series and it's going to follow a team of people wouldn't you want at least people to be excited about who's coming up next? <laughs> I just don't get it. And it sucks because I really liked the first half of this book. Like there were little, like as, as I said before, there were little things that bothered me, but for the most part, I was enjoying it. Hell, this could have been a novella just with their relationship and it would have been fine. The dramatic stuff around it, I have no words. I am very conflicted about this book. I can't get words out. It's probably really unfair of me because now forevermore I will be judging hockey books based on Tal Bauer's hockey books. And I really shouldn't do that because those books I think are so out of this book's league. Like it's literally pun intended. I'm sorry, this clip is just gonna be me not getting words out and just contemplating my life choices. Hi friends, it is Sunday the 26th of February. I am about to run out the door to go to the Pregnancy Babies and Children's Expo with my sister who is the one having the baby. This could be an interesting day. But anyway, I'm heading out the door in about five minutes. It's about 10 past eight in the morning and I need to go and catch a train. And then, yeah, as I'm going, I'm going to read the next book for this vlog. So I'm going to be reading Stripped by Zoe Castile, which is a pick for Jamie. And this will only ever be the second Zoe Castile story that I've read. Zoe Castile is also Zoraida Cordova and the only other Zoe Castile book that I have read was the one from the Peculiar Taste anthology. So this one is not a paranormal romance. I really don't know anything about it except that it was Jamie's pick. So I shall update you guys probably later this afternoon once I finished reading. Okay guys, so I finished Stripped by Zoe Castile. Now this was the pick for Jamie Tart, which of course being Ted Lasso, all I hear in my head when you say Jamie Tart is Jamie Tart, do 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 do. Like that's just living rent free in my brain. But anyway, I found this one to be really interesting. Like the, I really liked like the first three quarters of it. And of course the third act gets really dramatic and I don't know, it's a bit too dramatic for me, but definitely not a bad story. And Zoe Castile can write a story. So, you know, it's not all that bad. So this one is about Robin who is a elementary or primary school teacher and she's teaching fifth grade and everything in her life is kind of falling apart at the minute and the book opens with her realizing that the laundry that she has collected is not hers and she discovers this because she pulls out a sparkly thong and men's track pants and that morning everything that could go wrong does go wrong for her and it turns out that the laundry belongs to her neighbor anyway he's ridiculously attractive and he is you know, enamored with her. He thinks that she's hot and wants to get to know her more. And so he kind of ends up finding a way to start talking to her and they get along great. And then she accidentally insults him because she doesn't realize that he is a stripper. And then she finds that out when her best friend is getting married and he is one of the strippers hired for the bachelorette party. And it forces them to actually have a conversation. There are lots of steamy scenes, but he is determined to make this relationship work for the time that he is in New York. So his crew travels around and they're only going to be there through the summer. And then later on they find out that that time is going to be cut sh even shorter because they've been hired by a hotel in Vegas. And it's about how Robin and Fallon open up to one another, how they recognize that for the first time in ages, they're both really happy with one another. Like with, without condition, they make each other happy and that's what they want to pursue. And then there's a whole lot of other side plots with a guy that's into Robin who just keeps making trouble. He's her boss. And then there's Fallon really doubting himself because of his profession and doubting that he is good enough for Robin when she has no issue really with what he does. So it was fun in a contemporary romance kind of way. It's the first book in a series, I believe. But yeah, like it was, it was entertaining and enjoyable. And I can kind of see why this one was suggested for Jamie because Jamie is supposed, you know, supposed to be the pretty boy of the group. He's very concerned with how he looks and all of that. And in a lot of ways, Fallon does have that, but he's also much more, uh, he's much more aware of other people 
and I mean, that would be the point of Jamie reading this book is learning that you can be aware of how attractive you are without being a dick about it, essentially. So yeah, like, it was fun. I still have four books left to read, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna power through it. We've got like two weeks to go before I have to have this video edited. And I'm kind of hoping, because I was not this clever person who has this editing as I go um, sort of stance. I'm, I'm kind of hoping I haven't lost any footage because I've been filming this in between other vlogs and <laughs> praying absolutely praying that i have not lost anything yeah the struggle is real but anyway happy march it is march the first and tonight i'm going to be reading lead by kylie scott it would have helped if i had actually checked to see who this book was for before i sat down please hold so this is another book pick for keely so i'm very excited because a it's kylie scott and i just just want to read more kylie scott so yeah this is gonna be fun. I know it's book three in the Stage Dive series. I've definitely read at least the first book in the series. Did I think to read book two? No, but then again, I also can't remember if I have read book two, so that's maybe something else that I should check. But I'm not gonna read it if I haven't, because <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> Can anyone say hot mess vlogger? That's me. So apparently I'm kidding myself and I haven't read anything in the Stage Dive series, but I thought I had. What is wrong with me? honestly. And I can't even remember if I said the actual name of the book that I'm reading. I'm reading Lead, not Lick. So if I said Lick earlier, I'm clearly delusional. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I've started reading Lead. I'm really enjoying it so far. It is about a rock star band called Stage Dive. I swear I've read at least one book in the series. It's doing my head in. But anyway, so the heroine in this story's name is Lena. She is a temp personal assistant secretary type character at the start of the book and she gets fired because she doesn't take crap from anyone and she stands up to the guy that's being verbally abusive and he happens to have the members of Stage Dive in the room and they're impressed by her and it turns out that Jimmy, who is their front man, needs a personal assistant. He is six months out of rehab and six months into sobriety and every sort of sobriety coach person that he's had has not worked out and they decide that they like Lena because she stands up to people, she doesn't take anyone's crap and so they offer her a job as his, as his live-in personal assistant. And then we flash forward a couple of weeks and Jimmy is having a full-on meltdown because the mother of one of the other band members has passed away and she was basically like a surrogate mother to him and his brother. And Lena basically gets him through this funeral by talking him down. And I really like their dynamic because they're both just really strong dominant personalities. I mean, I'm not that far into it, so like there's still heaps to learn about them, but I like their dominant personalities and also the fact that Lena is so unwilling to back down but she also recognizes that he's going through a tough time and he needs support but he, what he doesn't need is someone to give in to him. So great so far. Also for people who've never seen me do this before it's bath night for plants where I have to shove all of them in the shower because it's quite literally the fastest way <laughs> to water all of them. And because all the plants are in the shower now this feels very empty no plants <laughs> just lots of cover pots i finished lead i really really enjoyed it even if uh the two lead characters are a hot mess <laughs> the whole way through the book and it's a slow burn because they really don't get together until the 70-ish 72 percent mark in the story so as i said at the start lena is hired as jimmy's personal assistant living assistant and sort of sobriety friend and he is dealing with a lot and as it turns out he has a strained relationship with his brother who is also his bandmate and the rest of his bandmates because he has OD'd before and they've obviously basically called enough's enough and he's desperately trying to make it work and trying to keep his life together. Meanwhile Lena has her own issues with her family and a string of really bad relationships in the past but the longer that she spends with Jimmy she begins to develop feelings for him and she eventually admits this to him at one point and he just thinks that it's the funniest thing ever which is not the response that she wants and to that end he tries to help her get over him and that's usually by forcing her out on dates with people which he can't let her go on he is so possessive and into her but he just doesn't understand what that is that he ruins these dates like he attends one with her. Granted, he set her up with a friend, but the whole thing, like I just read it and I'm like, she is about to punch you, mate. So you need to leave. <laughs> but in this, but it was also really funny because he clearly does not understand what he's feeling towards her. He's the clueless hero in this sense. And a lot of that comes from the fact that he has a really 
bad relationship with his mother. So she is in the book. She has she has a substance abuse problem as well and keeps coming back to him for money and does some really horrible things to Jimmy in the hope of getting money. But his relationship and what he perceives to be the ideal of what is love is totally skewed. And Lena, to her credit, puts up with so much nonsense. She puts up with so much because she actually, because she loves him. And eventually she calls enough is enough. And like the whole thing was just messy and awkward, but you just wanted them to get through it and to be together. So I can totally see why this was a recommendation for Keely from the podcast. I think particularly in the first season, Keely is really sorting out what she wants in a relationship and you know is she settling or is she fighting for what it is that she wants so like I totally totally get where this book came from probably more than any other book I've read so far for the other characters so yay that was another Kylie Scott book I still swear that I've read another book in the series but I blame midweek brain hi guys it is March the 4th and I'm gonna apologize for the lack of energy I'm feeling rather miserable at the minute because I seem to have picked up I don't know if it's cold or something else. I'm just grateful that I have a voice because I didn't have one this morning. Yeah, you would have thought that after the last couple of years, people would have, you know, learnt not to come to work when they're sick. But here we are and now here I am. Anyway, I'm going to read the next book for this vlog. I'm going to be reading Polaris Rising by Jessie Mihalik, I think is her name. And this was a book recommendation for... Isaac. It's been a while since I read a sci-fi so I'm actually pretty excited. So I'm just gonna camp out on the couch with my water, potentially the aircon because it's um, supposed to be something like 30 degrees today. I'm gonna try and read and hopefully not fall asleep on the couch. I finished Polaris Rising and that was really fun considering how long it is. Like it's a super long, long book but it is definitely a space opera with a romance in it and I have not read one of those in a while. So that was great and I don't know what I thought it was but it definitely wasn't what I was reading <laughs> so that's always good as well. So this one is about Ada who is basically an heiress to one of the you know most powerful houses on earth. Earth essentially has these like it's the conglomeration I think and various houses have various levels of influence and power and she belongs to one of the top three. But she was being forced into a marriage she didn't want to a member of another one of the top houses and so she fled and so she's been on the run for two years. And at the start of this book she has been captured, she is plotting out her escape and she ends up in the same cell as a guy called Marcus Locke who has a reputation as being a soldier who went rogue and killed his entire team in a really massive battle war thing. Knowing she needs help to escape before her father or her former fiance recapture her, she strikes up a deal with Locke and the two of them end up going on the run and they pick up some other allies on the way. It's very much a political sort of maneuvering type of thing because she's trying to work out exactly why her former fiance is still trying to get her to marry him. And it has something to do with what is in her dowry and sort of the stranglehold that the houses have with each other in terms of they're always trying to one-up each other with technology advances and things like that and like it was just very very cool and I liked it I loved the slow burn build up between Ada and Locke I liked the reveal we got about exactly who Locke is and why he did what he did I have to admit like after the first couple of scenes we see with Locke I had some suspicions about where the story was going and I was all there for it because it's a plot line that I quite like anyway yeah just very cool in terms of the political maneuvering and things like that so I did go back and listen to the Fader Mates podcast again for why they picked it for Isaac because I had forgotten and it was a rat because he's got his captaincy and they thought that he would like and this is quite a smartly written sci-fi romance in that there is a lot of moving parts and yeah it was just great it was fun I will say I am a, still a little bit woozy thankfully my throat is not too bad now like it was not great earlier but I am waiting for my medication to kick in I'm all head floaty the book was great that was a great way to spend the afternoon hey everyone so it is the 5th. I should know this because I said the date yesterday. It is Sunday the 5th. I am wearing my Ted Lasso Be a Goldfish shirt. Happiest animal on earth. Channeling positive things. And I'm going to read the second last book that I have to read for this vlog. And that is Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins, which is a which is an American historical romance. This one was recommended for Higgins and 
I'm very excited. I am still catching up on my rewatch of season two of Ted Lasso at the moment. So last night I actually watched episode five and six from season two, I think, or six and seven. I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, I'm going to probably do the same thing tonight, but I thought I would do the reading first. Gotten through a significant part of my to-do list today. Um, I'm, I'm feeling better in terms of my voice, but my throat is still really sore and my chest still feels pretty tight. So I'm just going to see how I go. I haven't really talked at all today except for now <laughs> to the camera. So I suppose that's a good thing. Um, I have edited and uploaded five videos across the two channels. I have scanned in a whole bunch of books for, or pitch books for work. I've taken some Instagram photos. Last night while I was watching Ted Lasso, I was also updating my reading spreadsheet and doing all my reviews on Goodreads. So sorry if you're a friend that follows me there because at the moment I'm just review dumping when I get a chance. Yeah, like I've, I've been productive, but I've mostly been sitting down and, and not running around. I did go grocery shopping this morning as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll just see how I go. And uh, fingers crossed, I'm okay for work tomorrow. Although if I still feel like this, I might just call it and take the day off because I just, I don't want to have to talk a lot and then lose my voice and then have to take a day off. Then I've got to figure out why my Kindle keeps restarting itself and losing battery because I had this fully charged this morning and it's at 79%. So it's obviously not happy at the minute. I just, I don't really want to reset it because I don't know what that does for anything that I've added to the device. But yeah, that we may come to it at some point. So <laughs> that's really annoying me at the moment. But that's okay because now I'm just going to read. I'm going to chill out for a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'll update you guys when I have started reading the book. Okay, so I just finished Forbidden and it was really good. I mean, it's Beverly Jenkins, so of course it's good. Yeah, I mean, I knew nothing about the stories going into it. So it is about Ryan Fontaine, who I believe appear, must have appeared, going by the author's note, in a previous book. And everyone was really, you know, intrigued by his character. He is an African-American who passes as white. And in the story, he has become quite wealthy. He's passing as a white man. He owns and runs a saloon. And one day he rescues a black woman that he finds walking through the desert. And she is severely dehydrated. And if she spent any more time outside, she would probably die. And Eddie is a very independent woman who has decided that she's going to get to Los Angeles. She's going to open a restaurant and she's going to make her own way. And for a little while that works, but then she runs afoul of a man who she thinks is a priest and he ends up leaving her in the middle of the desert. But Ryan finds her and nurses her back to health. And then she ends up making friends in town. And Ryan is just absolutely intrigued by her. The only problem is he's currently engaged to a white woman and Eddie will not settle for being mistress at all. And she is a fantastic cook. She sort of gets this reputation in town as the best cook around and people just come from everywhere to eat the things that she makes. And it's their story and how they come together and how Ryan has to make the decision about whether or not to stay white passing or to actually cross the colored line and admit the truth to everyone else in order to win Eddie. And and not even to win, but to be worthy of her because she, like, she is an incredible character. Both characters face quite a bit of racism in the book. There is some gun violence and Eddie is severely injured twice once at the beginning of the book, once at the end of the book. But it was just really well written and very engrossing. And yeah, I'm glad that I read it. So this was a pick for Higgins and Higgins is a bit of a romantic at heart. And I can see why this book was suggested for him. So yeah, this was a really good time. Hi guys. So this is the last book that I'm reading for our Ted Lasso inspired collaboration. I am reading Vision in White by Nora Roberts, which is the first Nora Roberts book that I've read. I did read her JD, first J.D. Robb book for one of Roy's picks, but Vision in White was the Faded Mate's recommendation for Rebecca, who I adore as a character. Rebecca is just such a fantastic character in the show. And it's funny because I can't remember if I said earlier, but I finished my rewatch of season two the other day and it was just so much fun going back and watching Rebecca's arc. She's such a good character. Anyway, Visions in White is the first book in a quartet about four friends who have a wedding planner sort of business. And this book follows Mackenzie, who is the wedding photographer. I think it's her relationship with a guy called Carter, who is the brother of one of their brides. So I've only read a couple of chapters and they've only just had their meeting and they actually know each other from high school. They weren't close friends, but they knew friends of friends. 
and he's back in town now to teach at their high school and yeah I'm intrigued to, where it, to see where it goes it's a fairly easy read so far it's actually a little while after I finished Visions in White or Vision in White uh, by Nora Roberts. It, I think I finished it last night and I didn't update you guys when I was done. I was just really tired. I went straight to bed. So this was Mackenzie and Carter's story and Mackenzie is a wedding photographer. Carter is the brother of one of the brides and their relationship is for the most part pretty wholesome but Mackenzie has quite a toxic relationship with her mother or really her mother is just a very toxic person and is constantly asking for things and to you know just keep the peace and to get her out of her life Mackenzie often just agrees to it and so a lot of things that happen in this story and a lot of the ways that Mackenzie reacts to the relationship comes down to the relationship that she has with her mother and Carter has his own things going on he was also in a toxic relationship his ex-girlfriend is not fantastic and was included in this plot but it kind of felt like it was shoehorned in to the plot like I think we probably could have just dealt with Mackenzie's mother to be honest but yeah so they sort of had that sort of shared understanding of working and dealing with narcissists and yeah, I mean it gave them common ground but also Mackenzie really struggled to make the relationship work because she just doesn't do long-term relationships because she has not seen good examples of them in her life you know for someone who works in the wedding industry she's quite jaded and cynical and you know fair enough she you see she's around all of that stuff all of the time but also her own personal experience comes into it Carter, however, is just this absolute cinnamon roll of a hero. He is, I think I've mentioned he's a high school teacher, but he just is in love with Mackenzie. Like, no questions about it. To the point where he, even though he is in love with her, he knows that this is not working and she is not ready. And he's like the one to just say, you know what? You need to sort it out. I'll be here and I'll wait for you, but you've got to sort it out because this is not healthy for us. And I loved him for it. He was just a really great character. Overall, the story was fine. I mean, it's very predictable, very, you know, traditional romance beats. It was published in 2009, so it is a bit of its time. The G slur is used in here at the very start of the book. It's the only time it happened. So be aware of that going into the book. And I suppose my other critique would be that the story felt like it dragged a little bit from maybe the 75% mark when it probably could have been wrapped up a little bit faster. But yeah, it was a good story and I totally get why. It was put down as a potential book for Rebecca, just that whole having your heart broken by someone that you love and having to pick yourself up afterwards and trying to move on with your life and trying to accept nice people in your life. <laughs> like I totally get it. That's, that's totally where Rebecca is at this point in time. I'm going to come back at a later point and I'm going to wrap up this vlog and share my thoughts overall on this little collaboration of reading books recommended to Ted Lasso characters. Hi guys, so I'm back here to wrap up this reading vlog because I have not done it yet. Anyway, I have just finished editing the rest of the vlog and it's like 40 minutes long so we're going to try and keep this fairly brief. I think at the end of it and going back through all of the clips and thinking about all of the books that I read for this vlog there were quite a few books that I was just kind of on the fence about and some of them are ske I skewed towards yeah no that's not something I want to continue to things I'm, okay well this is intriguing and maybe in the future I might come back to the author or the series I'm, and in my head I'm thinking mostly of Naked and Death by JD Robb because I think that that one will probably improve with time considering when it was first written. At the end of the day I think there were a whole there were a few books that I really really enjoyed I think Polaris Rising by Jesse Mihalik and Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins and The ex -Hex by Erin Sterling were books that I just really enjoyed for the sake of them and I also think that they fit really well for their characters that they were recommended for. Same thing with Vision in White by Nora Roberts and Lee by Kylie Scott. I think they fit the character and I think that's probably why they sat in my top five. But yeah it was really fun to kind of do this and go through and read books to see how they fit with a character and just try some new authors and do this alongside my friends and you know we spent a whole lot of time over the last couple of months just messaging each other and you know doing check-ins and, and whatnot and it has been really really lovely so I'm so glad that I did it. It's a big project, it's my first long-term vlog style project and I have learned some things along you know keeping <laughs> better checks with uh, my video clips because I did lose some that I had to find and I'm so glad that I'm so bad about clearing the memory card on this camera because that would have been a really big problem if um, if I was actually better at doing that so maybe my bad habits actually are working for me I don't know anyway I will leave a link to everyone down below as well as their videos and links to 
the Goodreads links for all of the books so that you can check them out. If you haven't heard the podcast episode, I highly recommend you go and check it out. I'm very excited for season three of Ted Lasso and to see where the story and the characters go this season. It's going to be a good time. And I just kind of want the Diamond Dogs book club to be a Diamond Dogs book club because... How awesome would that be? If you guys have read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. If there are any books that are part of series that you think I should continue even after my thoughts and my rambly comments, because I... <laughs> We ran through the gamut of uh, Steph's emotional state in this vlog, I have to say, over the last three months. Feel free to let me know that there are things that I should continue down below. Alternatively, if you just want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a soccer ball or a football. We'll call it football because it is a Ted Lasso thing. In my head, it's a soccer ball down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone. <laughs>